Amen. We thank God for you uh, tonight. I believe the Lord is going to do something special for you this evening. Amen. God has something He wants to do in each and every one of our lives. He really does. He's got a great plan. The prophet Jeremiah told us in 29 11, He has a great plan for us. And He's working things out and processes taking place in our lives and He's bringing us to a designated place. He knows what He is doing. God does not make mistakes. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even sometimes it feels like maybe God put us on the wrong path or we've taken the wrong turn. But if He hasn't. Amen. He has it all worked out. He knows exactly what He is doing. And tonight I'm going to show you some things here tonight that I think is going to really uh, open your eyes. It's going to open your eyes to what God is doing in your lives. Amen. It's going to open your eyes. As a matter of fact, I didn't really know what I was going to title of this message, but the Lord gave it to me as I was sitting there. I've got a message tonight, but I didn't have a title, really. I put something down, but I didn't like what I put down. I didn't know what to put down. You ever been like that? You just didn't want to title something. Titles sometimes have a lot of meaning. Sometimes they don't. Amen. Sometimes they don't mean much of what you even talked about. But uh, tonight I feel like the Lord would have us to think about this, that God wants us to lift our eyes up high. Well, that's the title of my message tonight. Lift your eyes up higher. Amen. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 15. So turn your Bibles there if you have them tonight. Genesis chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 down to verse 11. Now this is a joy to me tonight to be able to preach on Wednesday night. I don't get to preach very often on Wednesday night. And it's different. Amen. It's a lot different to preach on a Sunday night. And I thank God that uh, I get the opportunity to do that tonight. I think the Lord is going to honor us tonight something special around these altars at the conclusion of this service. I do want to make a very quick explanation of why I changed the date for the men's birthday on that Friday and Saturday. And I was reminded by my daughter Megan that that weekend that I planned the work day, all of the ladies are going to be at the, at the uh, ladies retreat and I have to relieve her in the press store. <laughs> and so, I don't want to call the work day that I'm not going to be at the work. I think a good leader leads by example. And so if I call the work day, then I need to be here to lead and help work. Amen. And so we have said it's back one more week until that first weekend of May will be our work, um, our work days. We're going to do Friday and Saturday. There's a lot to do. And God is doing great things. Anyway, have you turned to Genesis chapter 15? Yeah. Amen. Okay, let's look at verse 1. and. We're going to go down to verse 11 and look at some things here. Now this, here in chapter 15, and of course it is God renewing his covenant with Abram. And so we're going to look at some things here about that. Beginning at verse 1, I'm reading from the King James Version. So if you have another version, uh, do your very best to just follow along with me in your Bibles. But I want you to look at these things here. Verse 1, it says, After these things... The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward him, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against the other, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Chapter 15 of the book of Genesis is a high water mark of one of the high water marks of the Old Testament when it 
comes to Old Testament revelation. Something is about to happen here. Amen. Something greater is getting ready to take place in the life of Abram. Here in chapter 15, Abram at this point in time has been walking, following God in a general sort of way because of the call of God in his life. You remember the call of God three chapters before this where God calls Abram out of Ur of Chaldees. He said, Abram, get out of thy country and out of, from among thy kindred unto a land that I will show thee. He said, I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you. And I will make your name great. And I will make you a blessing. And whosoever blesses you, I will bless. And whosoever curses you, I will curse. And this was the call of God to Abram. And Abram was walking that thing out. And he had heard the voice of God. And he was obedient to follow the call of God in his life. But here in this first verse, we see Abram in a conundrum. We see him confused. We see him wondering what is going on. Very peculiar wording in that first verse. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, in the terminology, in the word structure here, we find a conjunction. What God is referring to, he says, after these things, he's reaching back to whatever happened before that and says, fear not, Abram, I have thy exceeding great reward. I am your shield. Well, what was God talking about? If you go back to the chapter, you find a great victory had been won by Abram. In the 14th chapter of, of Genesis, that's where Abram goes and rescues Lot. And he fights with uh, this man that I can't really pronounce his name, Catalabar. Something like that. He's kings of the east. And he goes and rescues Lot and brings back all of the things that these kings of the east had taken from Sodom and even uh, taken Lot hostage. Abram goes with his men and rescues all of this stuff back. And he's coming back with all of these spoils. And he meets the great man of God, Melchizedek, with the anointing, uh, the anointing of the priest on his life. And but Kizdik blesses Abram and says, you are blessed, Abram, above all people. He says, he blessed and blessed me, Abram, of the most high God, the, prevent, the possessor of heaven and earth. And so all of these great things happen to Abram. And here he is in this first verse of chapter 15, all after the great victory. And you find God coming down to him and saying, fear not. Fear not, Abram. Because I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Amen. Hallelujah. What we find is something transitioning, something taking place. And there is a principle set here for us to understand and grab a hold of. That on the heels of some of our greatest victories will come some of our greatest trials. We cannot rest on yesterday's victory because another battle is on the way. But when you have your hand in God, God says, fear not because I am your shield. Hallelujah. I am your exceeding great reward. Don't worry about it. As I brought you through victory that time, I will surely bring you through victory the next time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we need to grab a hold of the principle and the truth that the enemy is always going to come back and try again. Amen. We don't know exactly what was on Abram's mind and why he was discouraged, but the context lets us know that in his heart was the discouragement that he did not yet have the promise of an heir for his life. Amen. He did not yet have an heir. And so a discussion takes place. And in this whole discussion, God is doing something great. God is getting ready to shift Abram into a whole new level. Hallelujah. This is the plan of God for our life. God's calling is the place of beginning. Can somebody say amen? amen. Uh, but to this point in time, Abram was walking in the call of God. He heard the voice of God, but the Bible says that he was going where he didn't know he was going. He was wandering around looking for something that God had promised him, but he didn't know what it was. You ever feel like that? I know God has something for me, but I don't know what it is yet. I trust in the Lord, but I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going. This was Abraham's life. This is what Abraham was walking in at this point in time. And what God is getting ready to do is cause Abraham to lift his eyes higher to see something more specific. God was 
Hallelujah. And so Abram is walking in this initial call of God. We all start out the same way. We hear God's voice or we feel the tug of His Spirit and there's something drawing us to get us in a place where we're right with God. I wish I had some help in the house tonight. Amen. And so Abram is right with God. He's walking in the will of God and God is getting ready to transition him, change him, and cause him to be position him to a place of a greater revelation understanding of what God is doing in his life. Just as God was doing that for Abram, God wants to do that for us. Praise God. He's getting ready to lift us up, cause our eyes to look up higher and begin to understand the workings of the hand of God in our life so that we can move in a greater dimension and level than we have ever known before.
begin looking around. God did not call the church to look around. God did not call the church to look around. God called the church to look up. I remember Isaiah, the prophet, was in the temple and said, I saw the Lord. Where was he? Was he down on the ground? No, he was high and lifted up. Praise God. We come into the house of God. I'm glad you're here tonight. But praise God, you're here to see me. You might be disappointed. But if you're here, praise God, the mindset that you're here to find God. And have your eyes lifted up. You will not be disappointed. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, lift your up your eyes up higher, Abram, and count the stars if you can. How majestic I am, says God. Is there anything too hard for me? I suspended every star in space. Glory to his holy name. Amen. And the Bible says he began to see, again, an understanding of who God is. You have to kind of read between the lines. There was something transition in his faith. Here it says, for the very first time. And he believed in the Lord and was counted unto him for righteousness. The very first time that this word belief is associated with Abram is found here in chapter 15 of Genesis. It does not mean he didn't believe before. Because he heard God's voice way back when he was in Ur of the Chaldees. He heard God's voice and he responded in obedience. The Hebrew writer says that when God called him to go to a city, that he went not knowing where he went, but staggered not at the promises of God. Amen. So this is not the belief like he didn't believe God before. But this belief, praise God, is something more, something higher, something he got a hold of, praise God. When he got his eyes upon the Lord, he got his eyes lifted up. Revelation began to unfold before him. I'm telling you right now, God wants to pour revelation into your life like never before. If you'll get your eyes set on him, God will begin to show you something great that he has in store for your life. Amen. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. God is constantly adjusting things in our lives. He's constantly bringing things about in our lives that causes us to have a greater grasp and understanding that he's in control, that he's working situations out, that he's a faithful God, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that the righteous will never be forsaken or his seed begging for bread, that he's a healer, amen, that he's a provider, praise the Lord, that he's the one that's worthy to be praised, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody in the house today that would say glory to God, amen. Amen. It's time that the churches lift their eyes up higher. The, there are higher levels and degrees of influence that God intends to lead each and every one of us into. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yes. There are higher levels and degrees of influence that God intends to lead each and every one of us into, but it will require us to trust and believe in Him. Yeah. Praise God. We can't work this thing out in our own strength, in our own mind. In our own ingenuity, in our own thinking. I tried it. Doesn't work. Praise God. Just when you think you had everything figured out, you find out the Lord said, Oh, you're going to go this way. And you always have to be pliable and ready to adjust. Praise the Lord. Some people get frustrated with God because they don't have never learned how to adjust and be flexible. You have to be flexible with God, pliable with God. God says in his word in Jeremiah, he says that he is the potter and we are the clay. He's molding, he's shaping, he's pushing, he's pulling. You ever feel stretched? You ever feel like, I, can't just, I just can't take any more? The devil is a liar. God is stretching us because he's molding us. He's making us what he wants for us to be. And he is the potter and we are the clay. But if the clay jumps out of the potter's hand and falls on the floor as a blob, the thing will just sit there and get hard. Oh, God, help us not to be a bunch of hard clay Christians. Amen. <laughs> I know that's none of you here, but you just tell them when they come Sunday, all right? <laughs> Glory to God. There are higher levels and degrees of influence that God intends to lead us into. He really has a plan that he's working out in our life. Abram is getting 
great revelation broken into his life in a sense, in a way that he'd never known before. All of a sudden, the Bible says he believed God. What does that mean? It means that revelation came to him in a way that he had never seen before, that all of a sudden the light bulb went on, just like the cartoon. Bing! I get it, God. And the light came on, and it says he believed God. It's at this level of revelation that things begin to shift and change in our life. As our eyes get higher, get focused, and get, and get fixed on God. We used to sing an old song out of the hymn book. Amen. I know the hymns. I know the hers, too. <laughs> I've anchored to Jesus. Right? The strong's of life. Yeah. We've got to stay fixed. We've got to... You know, anger is a fixed thing. It'll, it'll, it'll get you stabilized. Amen. Amen. And so we've got to get our eyes fixed on Jesus. That's why the Hebrew writer said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the Alpha and the Omega and everything in between. He is the first and the last. He's the, he's the all in all. He's the, the amen, praise God. He's, he's the beginning and the end. He's the Genesis and the revelation. He's everything to me. How about you tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. But when our river, when our eyes open up to the, the majesty and greatness of God, that's a good place to shout hallelujah. When our eyes open up to the majesty and the greatness of God, and all of a sudden we begin to understand that we do have destiny, that we do have anointing, that we do have purpose, that we do have a place that God has taken us to, that God is not going to leave us in despair, but is going to work things out and show us what He is doing in our life so our understanding is filled up and we're secure to believe God and has counted us to righteousness. It moves us into another level, praise God. And with, other, with every level, there comes another devil. <laughs> That's why some people never want to get to the second level. But God doesn't call us to just walk in the general call. He's got a purpose. He's got a plan. There's a lot of people that have never got past this first level. They're just walking in. You know, they're still walking in the abstract. Well, I'm here, but I'm just kind of blending in. You know what abstract is? It means it's just a bunch of colors together. You can't really tell what it is. No, no shape. No definition. It's just an abstraction. God hasn't called us to be an abstract. He's called us to definition. He's called us to purpose. He's called us to individuality. He's called us, praise God, to be someone unique. There's things that God is depending on you to do that only you can do. Amen. There's a service. There's a ministry. There's something that God has for you here at Harvest Fellowship as a small part of the larger uh, community. That God is counting on you to discover that place and move in that direction and grab a hold of that thing and run with it with all of your mind. But that will require commitment. And that's a word that scares a lot of people nowadays. It takes commitment. Amen. Yeah, it takes commitment. This was the place. Uh, this is the place of progress where God gets our attention. It's that place where the commitment is that place where we stop looking around and we start looking at Him. Hello, somebody. God is moving. He's shifting. He's, he's doing something wonderful. And that, that's that committed place. From the call comes the commitment. Praise the Lord. Now, now you're invested in this thing. You commit yourself. And Abraham says, okay, God, I get it. I, I believe it. I, I understand it. And But how am I going to know? Well, how, how do I really know that you're going to do it? I believe it. I know you can do anything. But what's going to be my sign? And God begins to give him some direction. And begins to say, Abraham, this is what I want you to do. Go and get a go and get a heifer. Go and get a ram. And go and get a turtle dove. And go and get a pigeon. And, and get all of these things and, and present them before me. Hallelujah. And so it, it takes them to the place of consecration, praise the Lord. It, we're moving up. Yes. Each level is moving closer to God. Yes. We need to get as close to God as we can. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm tired of so many Christians asking me, is it okay if I do this? Well, what do you think? Will, will a, one glass of wine send me to hell? Does, it, does, it, does God really care if I smoke? I'm not going to get in all that stuff, but my point is this. Why do we want to walk so close to the line that we might fall in? I think we need to understand something, praise God. We want to get close to God. God's not far from the line that we cross us over into that place. There is no gray areas with God. It is black and white. And so God's calling us to a consecrated place. And Abram, you want to move into that place, amen, of where you have uh, my 
promise and where you have my covenant, then here's what I want you to do. I want you to take these animals and I want you to split them in half and lay them upon the altar. Hallelujah. He calls him and he tells him to go and get a heifer, get a she goat, get a ram, get a turtle dove, and get a young pigeon. And the Bible tells us that he divided them in half. This speaks to our consecration. I'm talking to you about tonight of getting our eyes up higher in order to get to that place that God is calling each and every one of us to. There must become a cutting away of the flesh. Praise God. He began to split those animals right in half and he laid them upon the altar. The, the scripture does not say he laid them upon the altar. Doesn't even mention altar, but the altar is implied. Amen. Every time animal sacrifice was brought before the Lord, it was laid upon an altar. The altar is an important place to find your consecration with God. The altar is an important place to find, amen, a place where God is going to meet with you and do something in you. Can somebody say amen? The altar is born in a place of getting a blessing from God. It's a place also of being changed by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God called Abram to the altar. He said, go and get these animals, cut the flesh away, and present them unto me. It is time for the church to cut the flesh away and present ourselves unto him. It's time to have a revival at the altar again, to get down on our knees, on our face before God, and say, here I am. up until this time in his life. 
And God is getting ready to do the same for you and for me. I like the conclusion of this service, what it says, of this verse. Verse 10 says, He took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against the other, but the birds divided he not. And verse 11 says, And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Hallelujah. When you have a determination to find the revelation of your call and your destiny and your purpose, and you give your all to God and not allow anything to stop your life and you Lay your life down the altar. I can guarantee you that the foul spirits of this world will attack your life. These, these vows that came down represent different types of tormenting things that will come against a believer's life to try to stop you from blessing the Lord. This was a blessing of covenant that Abram was giving to God. Amen. And sometimes, listen to me, sometimes we've got to battle away buzzers before we can bring the blessing of God. Amen. Sometimes it's a battle with the buzzers before we can bring the blessing to the Lord. Amen. There are spiritual attacks that are happening against your life all the time. And I'm telling you, it is time, praise God, to back those things away from your life. Recognize what is taking place. These things, these vows wanted to hinder the move of God in Abram's life. They were swooping down to try to steal the blessing. But Abe, the Bible says, Abram drove them away. I can just see Abram there in that place of protection. We've got to protect the blessing of God on our life and to not allow anything to come against us. There will be things that will try to pose you fear, doubt, unbelief, all kinds of things. You can recognize those things as spirits, as vows, but when they come down, it, praise God, God has given you the equipment, the power, the authority, praise God, to move those things away from you, to drive those things far from you. When the devil comes and says, you're not going to be blessed, you're not going to be used, you're not going to fulfill your purpose, that's a lie from the pits of hell, and you want to take it away. Hallelujah, you can do it. God has given you the equipment to do it. When the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Abram drove them away. Abram is very significant in character study as the father of faith. He was the original man that stood there and demonstrated what it was to walk in faith. Hallelujah. And he becomes a New Testament example as well. As the father of faith. And Abram can do it. You can do it. And I can do it. Praise God. Are you ready to set your eyes up higher? Are you ready, praise God, for God to bring revelation in your life of what your purpose and call is? When you fix your sight on Jesus and give him your all, God will do it. I can musicians to come back very quickly this time. Would you stand your feet with me? Lifting our eyes up high. He said, Abram, get out of your tent and lift up your eyes and see if you can count the stars. Hallelujah. 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 I exalt you to play that again for me. I'm going to open up these altars. God wants to meet you here. This is the consecrated place. You know, the story goes on and says that as they moved into that place of covenant, that all of a sudden there was a burning lamp and a smoking oven. God himself moved into the covenant place. And he grabbed a hold of the sacrifice. He accepted it and propelled Abel in a way of usefulness that all of heaven and all of earth salute today. Thank God for faithful Abraham. And just as Abram was faithful to the call of God to commitment and consecration and not relenting, not holding back, not being discouraged, driving away the foul spirits that would want to come and say, you're not going to make it, you can't do it, you're too weak. He drove the spirits away. And he stood. And God brought in Isaac. And Isaac brought in Jacob. And 
Jacob brought in Israel. And Israel still stands today. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Lord, you know our hearts, desires tonight. God, you know our commitment level. And you have a call. You have a purpose. And you have a plan. Lord, I pray, God, that our gaze will be set higher. That, Lord, when those times, those days, those moments come, when we begin to look around the circumstances, remind us, Spirit of God, to lift our eyes up higher because you are there. You are there. And you will make a way. You will bring us through. There will be an heir and a joint heir. There will be a plan that's worked out according to your will. And the glory of God will be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.